guys, it's Audrey of Wild Horse Studios and um, I had a very exciting model horse weekend and I wanted to show you the haul of the stuff that I got over the weekend. So I know that it was kind of shared around the model horse groups. There was a, a huge model horse auction uh, in Pendleton, Indiana on Saturday um, and it was basically like a collection dispersal. Um, the person that had the collection had died and the spouse just wanted to get rid of all of them. Um, so they put all of them up for auction. Um, there were over 600, I think they said 650 models of briars, stones, heartlands, porcelains, uh, uh, buggies, anything you could think of, it was probably there. Um, and they had a ton of like non-equine briars uh, there as well, which was really cool. Um, because I'm kind of trying to expand my non-equine herd a little bit. Um, so there were lots of things there to look at. Um, so me and my friend went to that and picked up what we could. Um, and then Sunday was the Dark Horse uh, model swap. And so we took a few things there to see if we could trade them. Um, stuff that we got Saturday and stuff that we already had. Um, and then we also picked up some other stuff as well. Um, so I'm going to show you what I got, um, by day. So I'll start with the stuff that I got at the auction on Saturday. I take videos so I can make TikTok. The auction, the prices were kind of all over the place. I mean, there was some stuff that we expected to go higher that didn't. I mean, there were a lot of hobby people there. Um, so most of the things you weren't gonna get a super good deal on because most of the people there knew uh, what those horses were actually worth. There were some really nice models in there. Um, I know the highest seller was a flocked uh, circus fighting stallion and he went for about a thousand dollars. The rarest one that everybody was talking about was um, a Briar Red Angus uh, bull. Um, apparently there's not very many of those. I don't know as much about the other animals. I'm still learning those. Um, apparently he's pretty hard to find, um, but we got there and people got kind of disappointed because he had a, a hole about the size of like a nickel in his back. Um, the rest of him looked fine, so I'm sure whoever got him will probably have him restored, but he went for around 600. There were some vintage custom flockies uh, that went for quite a lot. Most of the flockies went for a good amount, um, but I'll show you what I got. I'm excited about some of it. Um, <laughs> and uh, you'll see, we joked that I went to a model horse auction and I came home with mostly not horses, um, but they're really cool pieces. So uh, the first thing that I bought at the auction on Saturday was another Henry um, and I didn't pay much attention to him while I was walking around, but when I saw him up on the table, I thought that he just looked different somehow. Um, and he is quite different from the other Henrys that I have, he's just the regular you know, Henry, there's nothing special about him, um, as far as, like, run number or anything. Um, but he's a really nice copy of the original Henry. Um, he's got, like, 
really nice like just black eyes like it's not just like a spray blob like they did on a lot of them um he's got one of the better forelocks that i've seen um a really nice dorsal stripe and down into the tail um so yeah he's just like a really nice uh, version of the henry um so he'll be like i don't know my third or fourth <laughs> Henry that I have in my little conga. Um, he does have a couple little things that need touched up here and there, but um, for the most part, he's in pretty good shape. Um, but yeah, I just saw him and decided that I needed to have him, and I got him pretty cheap, so can't complain. So the next one is Tatanka, the white buffalo. And like, this is one that I wanted for for a while. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to look through the Identifying Your Briar books that they used to sell um, and would pick out stuff that I liked and stuff that I wish that I could have, even if it was something really rare, like, oh, I'd love to have that, but chances are I won't ever find it. And out of the buffaloes, the white one was always my favorite. Um, so when they had one, I was like, oh, I have to try to get it. Um, so I tried and I caught it. It's got a cute little... Uh, like war paint marking on its hindquarter. Um, it it needs a bath. I haven't cleaned it up yet, um, but most of the stuff on it, I think, will come off after I give it get it cleaned up. So, white buffalo. Um, I got this guy new in package. I did take him out of the package when I got home to just like fix up um, around his horn and his ear here. Um, but I have his package. I have his pen, and then I have his tag. But I got the PBR Bull. Um, my brother, uh, I have one brother that used to ride um, bucking bulls. And then I had another brother that passed away a few years ago that um, he used to breed bucking bulls. Um, and we still have several of the bucking bulls on, the pro on our property. Um, so that's kind of when I got into the bulls was when my brother passed away. So, um, having the PBR bull with the, the bucking bull on the hind quarter, I thought, you know, was a really neat piece to add to my collection. And like I said, he was new in package, so he's in, like, beautiful shape. Um, so I'm excited to have him. I think he's really neat. And he's shaded really nice, too. And they had, I think, four of those. There were three that were new in package, and then there was one that was out and had been signed by a couple of other people. The number one thing that I went there um, hoping to get, because they had pictures online that you could look at beforehand, and there was a lot of stuff that you didn't see in the pictures too. But from the pictures, the number one thing I wanted was um, this Longhorn Bull that was a Briarfest special run uh, named Alamo. And sure enough, I brought him home. <laughs> so um, I knew roughly like what I had in mind to spend on him, and I stayed under that price for him and then ended up spending more on this other one that I got that I'll show you in a minute. Um, but it, it worked out to be roughly what I was hoping to spend um, on him. So yeah, he was a Briarfest special run. Um, he's got really beautiful shading and clean markings. Um, yeah, you can see he's just really pretty. There was another Briarfest special run Longhorn that I was hoping to get, but he went too high for me. Um, but hopefully I'll find one later. But I just think he's like, he's so pretty. So yeah, I got an Alamo. I got another Longhorn. And this one is still in the box. I am going to take him out. Um, um, and he is a Brindle Longhorn. Uh, with the broken horn. They were, they were made like that. Um, there's a few runs of the Longhorn that were made, made with the broken horn. Um, but yeah, I, he, and he was one that I didn't see in the pictures beforehand. So when we got there early to go look around at everything and I saw him, I was like, I didn't see him in the pictures, but I really want him. Like, I know roughly like the colors of the Longhorns and the Brindle I think is really cool. Um, so I had to have him too. And he's still made in the USA too, which is kind of fun since briars aren't made in the USA anymore. 
I bought at the very end, I bought a group of um, stable mates. And I bought them specifically for, well, it's not really a horse, one piece in the group. Um, and that was for this little custom mule stable mate. He's got a cute little Appaloosa pattern. He's got a turned head. He's got his lip like even more up than the regular one is. Um, I just thought he was so cute when we were looking around at stuff. Um, he's not signed or anything, um, but most of the customs there were older, so I'm gonna guess that this is probably an older custom of some kind. But I just thought he was so cool, so cute, so I had to go get him. Um, so I bought the group of them to get him, and then out of that group, I also got two other stable mate mules. I got a cute little uh, done one. He's in good shape. And I got a cute little Appaloosa one that's also in good shape. Um, and then I, um, let's see, the rest of the group, I sold, I think, seven of them on the, at the swap meet the next day. Uh, there was a dog in the group, like a companion animal beagle that I sold to a friend. Um, and then my other friend took the other one of the Dunn Mules, because there were two in that group, and then I traded her a custom that was in that group, um, for, um, a collectible that she had got that day. So I got a collectible hammer, and I really like these guys too, I really like the little collectibles. And man, I wish I'd been into collecting the bulls back when all the PBR stuff came out because man, they were everywhere and it seemed like people couldn't get rid of them. Um, I'll probably hunt down more of the collectibles at some point, but I have a hammer. Um, and then my favorite purchase of the day um, is one that I saw him in the pictures and I thought he was kind of cool. Um, but then when I saw him in person, I knew that I just had to have him because his face is just the cutest thing in the entire world. So, my favorite purchase of the day is this guy. He's a custom, um, cemental bull, I think. Uh, and he's signed on the inside of his leg. Um, I don't know the artist yet. I'm hoping to figure it out. Um, uh, but it's signed as A-A-O. And he's made in 1986. So this guy is, let's see, he'd be 10 years older than me. So this guy's 36 years old. And he's like so nice. And his face is just the cutest freaking thing I have ever seen. And I love his little nose ring. And I'm just in love with him. I gotta figure out what to name him. He needs just like, I name all my bulls ridiculous things. So I need to come up with a ridiculous name for him. But, like, he's just so cute. I love him. I love him so much. <laughs> like, I cannot express my love for this this little cow. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to have to take him to, like, live shows with me. Um, he needs, like, some touch-ups and stuff if I actually wanted to show him. But he's in, like, pretty good shape for how old he is. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't bring him to live shows just so people can see him. Just so they can also enjoy his cute face. So, yeah. He's my favorite purchase of, of the auction on Saturday. And I got him for, like, a really good deal, too. Most of the custom bowls did not uh, go very high. Um, the only customs all day that went high were the flockies. Um, so that's it from the auction. Um which is plenty. Uh, there were other things that I would have loved to have, but I only have so much money. <laughs> but this was definitely worth, worth the overtime that I had worked the week before, that's for sure. Um, I had a lot of fun. So then at the swap meet, we went to the Dark Horse swap meet, uh, which was in Rensselaer, Indiana. Um, it was a bit further for us. Um, but we went to go just like check it out. We didn't have a table. We weren't selling at this one. I sold my stable mates that I had bought the day before. Um, I didn't really take anything else to get rid of. Um, 
but I did buy some stuff. So my friend gave gave me um, a little Thunder Drone uh, micro, and he doesn't have a leg, which is why she wanted to just get get rid of him because she didn't know how to fix him, and I'm not quite sure how to fix him either. Um, and then I accidentally popped him off the base. That was my fault. Uh, but that I know how to fix. Um, so I'm not sure what to do with him yet. But I got a cute little Thunder Drone Micro. And then she traded some of the stuff that she had from the day before. And she got me a little gold meal keychain. So yeah, I got a cute little gold meal. Got a cute little gold meal keychain. And I love him. She got one the day before and I thought he was the cutest thing. And I'm pretty sure this is also the one from the auction because there were a lot of people at the swap meet that brought stuff from the auction the day before. Um, but yeah, cute little meal. And then uh, the first thing that I bought at the swap meet was this cute little collect a donkey foal for a whole a whole three dollars. But I saw him and I was like, he's just he's so cute. He's just so little and he's got a cute little face so i had to have him it was worth worth the three dollars <laughs> for sure um and then as i was walking around um i saw somebody that, that was selling customs and so i stopped and kind of talked to her for a little bit and she was very nice we had a great conversation um and i'm hoping like maybe i'll run into her at like some shows or some other swap meets or something um because i'd love to like you know, talk to her more about stuff. Um, and so I kind of like looked at her stuff and I thought her work was really pretty and then walked around and shopped some more and looked at some other stuff and then decided that I really wanted one of her horses. So I went back and I bought this little custom Mustang in a, I would call it a flax and chestnut. Um, and this is the Resin Breeds of the World Mustang um, that's been taken off of the base. It was originally Gruyo, I think. Um, and she repainted it to a little flax and chestnut with uh, like a minimal, minimal splash, minimal Sabino probably. Um, and it's just, the finish work on it is just beautiful. I mean, this thing is smooth, like just so smooth and so detailed and the eyes are beautiful I can't get a good like angle of it um from there but it it does it'll stand on its own um so I'm hoping to take it out to shows this year that'll be fun um but I will put her her Instagram name down here so that way you guys can go and see her other work and go check her out because she had uh i think like i don't know seven or eight things available there of all all sizes um and then the first thing that caught my eye when i walked in at the swap meet was a resin which i wasn't sure that i had the money for after being at the auction the day before but i decided i just kind of had to do it and so I I had seen this resin for a while um, and I remember looking at him when he initially came out and I decided that I just I didn't you know didn't like him enough at the time but the more of him that I see painted and the more pictures I see of him the more I wanted him um, so I picked him up at the swap meet and so now I have a Wally West resin sculpted by Sue Kern uh, I'm not quite sure on what color I want to paint him yet, but he's got wild hair, which is totally, totally my thing. I love things with wild hair, especially when I get to paint them. Um, but he's really cool. He's just, he's just a neat guy. I like him a lot. So I think it'd be neat. I'm excited to paint him. I don't know when I'll get to paint him because I have so many other things I need to do at the moment. Um, but. But I will paint him. And then with Wally West, I also bought from the same seller. I bought the new inbox Atomic. 
Um, and this guy was one that, like, I was not excited when Briar released pictures of him. I don't really care for the mold. He's long. He's a shelf hog. Uh, I did not need more shelf hogs. Um, I don't have enough space as it is. Um, but then when somebody posted in pan pictures of him and I saw that he had mapped face marking, I just, and how pretty he was shaded. And I'm a sucker for a really nice bay. I paint a lot of bays. Um, I just was like, I gotta have that. And I haven't taken him out yet. <laughs> but yeah, I just got him yesterday. So yeah, when I saw that he had like a mapped face marking on a regular run, I was like, I need to have that. Like, they don't do that on regular runs, hardly ever, that I can think of. Um, so I had to have him. So I picked one up there. There's some other regular runs for this year that I'm hoping to get, but um, I'm hoping I'll get them at one of the other shows. Because they didn't have one of the other ones I was looking for there. But yeah, I have a new inbox ad mag. So I think that's everything. I don't think I missed anything. But yeah, I have... Had quite the haul from this weekend. It was a great weekend. Um, this was like, since I'll only be able to be at Briarfest for one day this year, this was like my Briarfest, but not Briarfest. Yeah, so this was like my little mini Briarfest. I had a great weekend. Um, it was nice to be able to spend the whole weekend with my friends and all the models and just having all kinds of fun. Um, I am going to take stuff to the Indie Blooms swap meet, which is May 22nd, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what I'll have customs-wise by then, because I have at least three others that need to be done before then, that have to be done, that have deadlines. Um, so I'm going to try to have at least a couple of customs available, but I don't know what they will be, or anything. And I know I have a bunch of OFs that are going. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this little haul video. Um, I'm excited about this stuff. So I hope you enjoyed seeing it. And I will see you next time. Bye.